back everyone to episode seven of the rally report podcast it's a quick turnaround this week with the black ball open beginning december 12th this sunday and today's episode is both going to preview and predict the happenings of the tournament um statistically speaking i should do better this time because yeah canary wharf was a shit show did not go as i imagined but anyway joining me today are two special guests former junior england prodigy and now aiming to take over the coaching world in the states elliot ridge and ranked 31 in the world and i'd say he's actually the star of team england until james wolstrop decided he wanted to be back in world-class yeah. form patrick rooney how are we doing guys what's going on mate good to be thank you all um good. yeah first of all i want to i think we need to address why pat's not in this draw why I'm not in this draw. I'm currently yeah, on the reserve okay. list. I'm currently, oh, you uh, are? yeah, third reserve. You know what? So third reserve. Yeah, and I'm waiting on a last minute call up as per usual. <laughs> Who's ahead of you on the reserve? Um, I think Hamami and Deck James are ahead of me. Oh, God. Um, does it usually pan out or are these just really luck of the situation? Um, well, Canary Wharf, I, was, I started off at seventh reserve and then. To the last day, I was second reserve. So, so many people pulled out of that, though. Like yeah. Six people dropped out. Well, in these times, like after COVID, I I, I expect that. So I'm I'm not going to be surprised if I get in. I'm waiting on it, and I'm training. You got your as bags if I... packed. Say again. You got your bags packed. I've got my bags packed. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Wait, so when you get the news I'll that have my PCR test, you get like you're in the draw. Then immediately you're booking flights and. You're heading over. Yeah, yeah. I'll um, I'll check to see what flights are like, just in case I do get in, and then if I do, I'm ready to book it, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Um, before we go into the draw, let's. So, Pat, you recently played in the London Open. Is that the most recent tournament you played in? Yeah, most recent. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about that tournament? I was a bit disappointed. I uh, didn't think I played too well, but George played well on the day. Yeah, um, and I I just worked with what I had, but yeah, just wasn't quite good enough. But disappointed to uh, to lose to him, yeah. Yes, yeah, a tough tough week for you, but still beat Sam Todd in three. Uh, yeah, work. Sam Todd, yeah. easy first round, comfortable. I know his game like the back of my hand, no problem there. Like he came at me with everything he has, but it was it just wasn't good enough. I was actually watching that again last night. That was actually a really good game. It was good actually. Yeah, the, he came the out. Squash was actually really good. Yeah, and he, he came at me like with a really high pace. Yeah, he was coming at you. That's what I was about. Yeah. Like, he, was, he was going for you. Like, he yeah. never volleys anything. And he was like, he was volleying. He was volleying like, everything, wasn't he? Yeah. Because he knows that's what I do. So he was trying to out-volley me. But, you know, towards each end of each game, he just he just dropped off, didn't he? Then he went for a backhand cross-court volley, Nick, out of nowhere and put it in yeah. the floor. And then exactly, like, yeah. And I was waiting for that. I knew he'd do that. Yeah. Was, there, was there some trash talk in between? Or are you guys pretty um, Pretty silent, yeah. There was trash talk silent. before, plenty of that before, like there always is. What's today in training? Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing during the game, just uh, mental, like it's all up here. I, I knew I had him. Gotcha. Uh, so, all right, so let's uh get into the draw itself. This is the black ball open and it's 110k prize money. So, I'm assuming the winner takes like what 100 bucks. Uh, the prize yeah, is a joke. That's yeah, that's first round, yeah. Restraint. Get half your flight back. <laughs> so you have to win at least one one match to make make some money. Yeah. Do they accommodate for your hotel situation and everything and transportation from the airport, or do you have to figure that? Out? Um, they do at some tournaments, but it's usually the rule with hotel is always two nights before, one night after. So two nights before you first play, one night after you lose, is what hotel you get. So you kind of have to judge how, when you're flying back, like to do with that. But then. If you win a few rounds, like more, you then will have to change your flight. But, like if you have got further than you were expecting to. Yeah. So it can end up being very expensive if you do well, and if you don't back yourself. <laughs> okay, and then uh, another interesting point is that this tournament's in Egypt, and I think we need to address that because I don't think home court advantage, the home court advantage is like insanely big. I think in Egypt because the crowd just does not cheer for anyone who's non Egyptian. No. Do you care to give us a little intake on that? Um, well, everybody knows it. Like you're, you're expected to not be clapped or cheered for. So, yeah. 
you know that going in. Uh, you just have to deal with it and get on with it. Uh, and then it makes beating an Egyptian even better, I think. You know, yeah. it's just, it's just the, the silence after you win. I just love it. Even though I've not done it yet, but I'm, I'm waiting on it. Um, so, when, yeah. you, when you do it. When, you do it, yeah, nice. when I do do it, that silence is going to be so good. Um, okay, so yeah, let's, before we begin, uh, I want to do a quick disclaimer. Obviously, all these athletes are world class, and I don't, we don't mean any disrespect to any of them, but given how the nature of the sport, they're going to be winners and losers, and I want to make this discussion as candid as possible. So I just wanted to put that out there, but yeah, let's start this. We're going to start with the uh, women's draw, if you guys don't mind. Yeah. And I'm just going to share the screen right there. And obviously, I'm going to be butchering most of these names. Give it your best shot. Okay, so we'll start off with the first round. Nella Gillis versus Yathrib Adele. I got Gillis on the, in that in three. Yeah, Gillis in three. Yeah. Yeah. Gillis in three. Think I'll go three. Gillis in four. In four, okay. Yeah, um, Adele to take the first. First game. Yeah. Got it. Um, well, Gillis is seated to win that one. And then next up is Danielle. I'm not going to even try her last name. Versus Tornay. Tornay. Uh, versus Lisa at. Akin, I think. What do you guys think for this one? I'm gonna go yeah. Danielle, three one. She she lives in Egypt, right? The Canadian girl. She lives there. Ooh. She trains there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. So she'll be pretty. I think she'll be a lot Home more comfortable court. than Lisa. So, uh, and she's doing well, right? Danielle now she's like top twenty, hasn't she? Play, playing well, she yeah. Is, she is top. Watch the play in um in London Open. Yeah, she's playing quite well. She's been doing yeah. well lately. Um, but. Don't want to count out Lisa Akin. I think she's also playing very yep. well. Um, Dangerous. So if, could be a five set of that. Yeah, I think that could go to five, but I guess we're all going with Danielle on that one. Yeah, I'm going Danielle in four for yeah. that one. Next up, we got uh, Nella's sister, Tina Gillis, versus Farida Mohammed. It's Farida's home, home court advantage there, and Tina's coming back from an injury, right? Yes. I don't. I can't. I don't know how long she's had out, but she's been back on court what a month or two. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. could be. I'll still. I'll still go Gillis on that one though. For, Farida, she's the young one, right? She's pretty young. Like she's still a yeah. junior. She might be out of juniors now. She's like. Uh, she's pretty young. Yeah, like she's gonna be fearless in her home country as well. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Tina. Tina, like three one or three two. Hell, you really set that up for an upset and then you flipped it up. Yeah. Nah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if she's got enough to beat Tina. Like, Tina's like established top 20 now. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Tina, but I think it'll be a tough one. You know what, guys? I'm going to go with Farida here. I, I'm just not sure with Tina's situation. I know she's coming from a pretty big injury. Not a big injury, but she's coming back from injury. It's her first tournament back. And as you say, I think round one could be. It should be on traditional courts, right? And I think. Yeah, that'll be on a traditional court, probably. Yeah, that that could really affect um, the situation. So I think I'm gonna go with Farida upset there. Next up, we got Lucy Termal versus Georgina Kennedy. Um, that's a big one, Gina, that. isn't she? That's a big can I just one. say? Can I just say there's some dirty politics going on here? I I call bullshit on this. The fact that we got three English woman players all in the, the same, same yeah. yeah, at a tournament in Egypt. That's some horse shit. I'm not. I'm not feeling this right now. Someone's fixed the draw there, haven't they? Someone's definitely fixed the draw. Who's, there. who's paid for that? But yeah, that's not. That's not good. That not rate that. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Georgina Kennedy in three. In three, yeah. Yeah. she's got she's, confidence. Must be like sky high right now. She's yeah. finding it hard to lose at the minute. What is she in the world right now? She must be like she's, she's up to, to twenty five right now. Twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. That's ridiculous. And there was this, um, I don't know if you guys know, there's this squash analytics that determines like, <coughs> um, how good you are during the, this season. I think this is relatively new, but they put her, Georgina Kennedy, as number six right now in the world. With her. Yeah. She, she literally has, she's lost like one match, I swear. Like, was it in the final of that 50K? Yeah, she lost to Nelly Yeah. Good. No, 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 she, she lost to Gohar. Yeah, in the final. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she lost. Uh, she lost in the final of Washington as well. Yeah, yeah. 
in DC, so she's lost two matches. We'll give her that. It's not bad. But yeah, definitely. she's been I, on a roll. I'm gonna go. Draw, I'm gonna go Gina though. In uh, I'm gonna go three close games. I think it's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be a steam roll, but I'm gonna go three three zero. Yeah, I'll go four. Uh, I don't like three three nils. Next up, we got Nada Abbas versus Joshna Chinapa. Definitely yeah. that. Uh, but I haven't seen much of Nada Abbas play, I don't think. Obviously, so, Joshna has... yeah, I, ser- I searched this one up. Um, this is interesting. So, uh, Joshna is the higher seed here, but the last time they played is actually in 2020 Black Ball, and Nada beat her in four. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. Nada then. And she just won a title as well. Yeah. I'm not she sure won- about that. Mm. Well, I, I I'm not sure if she won the, the uh, 20K that's just happened. You know, the one with L- the one L31. Oh, yeah, that's right. If you yeah, did, yeah, she yeah. did, she did. Yeah, I th- I'll go Nada Abbas on that as well. Yeah, I'm going to go yeah. Nada Abbas. I'm going with Nada Abbas on that. And then next up is Zena Makawi versus Tesney Evans. It's pretty. Uh, easy Not seen for me. much of Zena there. I don't. Yeah, don't I think really Tesney know. Tesney Evans is just way too established of a player for that yeah. to be an upset. Down with Tesney. Three for Tesney, Tesney on that one. And three. Obviously, Pat will go in four because he doesn't like threes. Yeah, four um, for me. You're gonna go in four again. Yes, yeah, Tesney in, in four. Yeah. Um, this guy. <laughs> next up, we got Mariam. Metwali versus Nadine Shaheen. Um, I'm going to go... Do you guys know who you're going with for this one? Yeah, I'll go with Nadine. I think I'll go with Nadine, just uh, that she's ranked higher, and I've seen her a little bit more on the, yeah. On the floor. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going with Nadine as well. I, I, I mean, I don't think she's going far past after that, but um, Nadine and four, as Pat likes it. Um I go three on that one, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll, I'll change. Next up, we got a French player, Colleen Amard versus Wild Card. Yeah. <laughs> this is a tough one. Give it a go, go mate. Lojan Gohari. Yeah, go with that. Uh, uh, I have no I idea who that is, but I'm going to back the Wild Card for that one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, you, never, you, you don't know with a, well, an Egyptian wild exactly. card. Exactly, it's in Egypt with an Egyptian wild card. You know yeah. it's going to be like some young girl who's just going to just going to go at you like 100 miles an hour. I'm going to go. Never, no, I've not heard of her. She won any British Junior Opens or she made it on the world world junior scene. That hasn't been a British Junior Open for like the last two years. So. Oh yeah, true that. Uh, I'm going. Yeah, she's Colleen. she's sneaking up on everyone. I might go for the wild card. Oh, so. just to. So I'm, gonna go I'm gonna go in five. In five. I'm going three. I got Colleen in <laughs> four. <laughs> um, okay, so now that round one is through, round two, I think these are some pretty relatively strong seeds here. Norel Sherbini versus Neil Gillis. I think El Sherbini in a close three. I'm gonna go yeah. Sherbini in a clear cut three. Clear cut three. Okay. I'll go mid mid difficulty three. <laughs> so like 11 sevens, 11 eights. I, j- I know for a fact that there's going to be a tie break in one of those games, which should be, I just have a feeling. Should be an close closeout. Should nice cross court, Nick. Should be too good. Should be good. Class, isn't she? Yeah. Next up, we got Norel Taib versus Danielle. Just want to mention massive, massive respect for Noral Taib to come back this early from the birth of her daughter earlier this year. And it's amazing to see her back. But it is also of a big question mark of how she's going to be able to perform. Yeah, we don't know how much she's been training or mm-hmm. for how long. So it's hard to call that one. First time uh-huh. went back after how long out? Over a year. Definitely. Yeah, obviously. At least nine months. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go with Tayeb. I think, like, she's so class. I think she's still got it in a lot. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Like, you, you have to feel maybe you'd underst- in three if she's gonna win. Yeah, you'd understand if she didn't win. Say if she would come back a yeah. bit too a bit too early. No, for some yeah. reason, I have absolute certainty she's gonna pass that round. Um, 
she's in Egypt Ellie, as well. Like just as yeah. Ellie, I think she's just way, just too class. Um, also, she, I think her being back in the women's tour really shakes up things. I think uh, these this past year, Sherbini and Gohar has kind of separated themselves from yeah. the others, but yeah. I think she kind of also changes things up because she's gotten before she stopped playing because of her pregnancy, she was going back and forth with these ladies. So I, yeah, she's passing this in three for me. Yeah. Next up, uh, Joel King versus we got Tina Gillis on this one, right? Or do we have a mix up? Someone said Farida, didn't they? Did you say Farida, Pat? I did. I say no, Farida? I didn't know. Yeah, I said, said Farida. I said Farida. Said Farida. <laughs> um, uh, it doesn't matter to me. I think Joel King's going to move on for this one. Yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah, yeah, I'll go Joel as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next up, this is what I. This is what really pisses me off here. I think SJ versus Georgina Kennedy. I think Georgina Kennedy should be in another part of the draw, but but yeah, she's uh, paired up with SJ again here in round two. They've played before, and I've seen yeah. matches. Um, yeah. I think SJ is, knows how to beat. Yeah, she's the Georgina. only. She's I, I, she's the only English girl. She really struggles with a like, different style. Yeah, I, I think uh, SJ yeah, takes the mover good away. Style. She's got a good style, Gina. I think. Yeah. yeah she yeah. it about, takes it in, like stops the movement. And SJ it's wins. The, is it the, what do you say? It's the wins. holds. That SJ has. Was, yeah, yeah. She stops her on the tee and doesn't allow her to like use her movement like to bring the pace up. I think she does yeah. it well. But you never know. I'll go SJ though. Gina's I'm gonna go well. SJ, go SJ in four. I'm going with SJ in three. Um okay, next up we both all got Nada versus Hania El Amami. Hania in four for me. Yeah, I watched them yeah. two play in, in uh, the US Open. It was quite quite a tough four yeah. for um Hania, wasn't it? So I yeah, but I, I, I think well. I'll go three. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you and your three. It up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You love really your three now. <laughs> I do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Hania, I mean, is a quality player. Obviously, still on the come up, even though she's seeded three here. But she always seems to have battles in the early rounds, but seems to fight it, fight it off. That seems to be the common factor. Um, next up, we got. I think this is a really spicy match: Rowan El Robbie versus Tesney Evans. I think this is a really good matchup between the two of them. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, who do you guys have? I'm going Rowan. I think Rowan. She. she I haven't seen Tesney. She's been playing a lot. Like, I haven't seen her at like a few events. She's kind of fallen off form. She's going. No, she hasn't fallen off form, but she's been a little inconsistent with her performances as of late. Yeah, I, I haven't seen her like yeah. on much, or maybe just like on Scorch TV. But <clears throat> I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go Rowan. Probably three. Or yeah, four. I think Rowan's another one like Hania. She's young and up and coming, isn't she? Yeah. Like, home, home crowd, home courts. She's already had like some huge wins as well. So. Yeah. Like beating Tesney Evans wouldn't be like out of a reach. So, yeah, I'm going with Rowan as well, just because I want to see also the Rowan versus Hania matchup, given their junior history. Yeah, that would be a good I, one. I haven't really seen them play since, you know, they both have gone to the professional circuit. But yeah, I think that this was this is going to be in five for her, but would not be surprised if Tesney Evans wins. Next up, we got Salma Hani versus. Nadine. Salma Hani. Salma Hani, yeah. She's been playing well. She's been... Yeah, she has. I think she, well. she she recently won the Malaysian Open, I believe. No, she lost to Eifer in the final, didn't she? Oh, she Yeah, she lost oh. to that young, young girl. She did, she yeah, did. Yeah. That was outrageous. Right, right. But she made the finals of um, NetSuite, right? And Also lost out, right, to Amanda yeah. Sobe, who's not featured in this draw. I think she's taking a break. Well then, bro. Um, is he, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'm I'll go, go Salma I'll as go. well. Salma, honey, Salma. Though. Yep. Yeah, yeah, hard Inform hitter. Salma. Um, next up, final Norhan Gohar versus the wild card. You guys, got, you guys got the wild card. I got calling oh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter for me. It, yeah, whoever it is, I, I think I'll go Norhan Gohar. Go very, very go solid at the minute. 
Yeah, Govart just she kind of gives me the Gregory Goltier thing of she just does not no upsets. Until yeah, she just chops honest. everyone. Yeah, until yeah, she meets uh, yeah, like Goha, I think Goha. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be in three. Whoever it is. Yeah, they're not gonna have much time on. I don't that. like fours. It's a quick, <laughs> quick twenty minute exit for that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, for that I reckon. Okay, so moving on to quarterfinals. Now we got um, Norel Shrabini versus Tayeb. I mean, a very healthy Tayeb would be an interesting one, but given the fact that she's just returning, I don't see that as an upset. I think El Shrabini is going to take that with ease. Yeah, I'm going to go Shrabini. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to take Tayeb, uh, obviously, a bit of a, a minute to uh, get back to where she was. So. At least yeah. back up to the point where she can... Like fully compete with Shabini again. I mean, what's her ranking? She's seated seven, so her ranking must be like still way up there. She must. Is she still in the top ten? She must be still in the top she ten. She could have. Um, she could have used the peg ranking. You know. Yeah. Like that puts you. You want to explain this to the audience? Yeah. So if you've had a long time out due to like injury or illness or something, your ranking will obviously drop because you've not been playing tournaments. So, like for instance, Gregory Gaultier was injured for a long time. And he got a pegged ranking of, I think it was somewhere between 10 and 20 in the world for his first few tournaments. I think you can use it three times in a season on your return to the tour. So I think that's, that, that might be what's happened there. That's pretty that makes sense. That's a good idea, actually, to rate that. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a fantastic thing to do because it just like doesn't make sense for like someone. At yeah, you have to work her way back up. <laughs> yeah. But I also don't think she's, Cairo. she's dropped that much out of the rankings as well. Um, no, no, she wouldn't have. But yeah. maybe, maybe somewhere outside the top fifteen or top twenty. I think that like a few months in, like I think that like over halfway through, like her timeout, she was still like, she was still like seven or eight or something. Like she was still right, in, right. That's and, why. Then that's like, the people saying. below her must get so annoyed by that, surely. <laughs> Like those people mm. want to break into the top 10, but they can't. Yeah. I'm actually just searching up her ranking right now. She's ranked nine in the world right now. So, oh, right. Okay. So that's just her, that's this, just a normal ranking. I guess the seedings just make sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So next up, I think this is a good matchup. Both tall, Joel King versus SJ. Who do you guys have for this one? It's a good match, that. Mm. That's a good matchup. I'm gonna go SJ. Uh, Has SJ not won Black Ball? She she won. She Black won. Ball, right? She won it, didn't she? Yeah. So she's like, she likes it. I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go SJ. I think it'll be tough though. I think a tough four games, but I think SJ is gonna. Yeah. Through. I might. I might go five for SJ. That's just a little um, English, bi- <clears throat> English English bias here. I can I can tell. Well, we've got no one left, so we need we need. <laughs> Wait till we um, get to the men's. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go with SJ here as well. Unless, I think it would be interesting though if Georgina does give her a run for the money and it, it's like a brutal five gamer and yeah. Joel King goes through with ease. But yeah, wouldn't be surprised if Joel King wins that one. But yeah. yeah. Also, next up, also a spicy match Hanyo Hamami versus Rohan. That's bad for Junior Day, is that one? Yeah, I'm still gonna go Hanya though. Yeah, I think, I think so. the yeah the experience of like playing the top players and like getting through the rounds like I, and the way she plays, she's very solid, isn't she? I, I don't think she'll lose that one. I'll go yeah. four. I think she's Hanya's gonna have it easier first match than Rowan is as well. Like Tesni Evans is gonna be a tough one for Rowan, so I'm gonna go Hanya in probably four. Well, it's just interesting because. These two ladies have battled it out in, throughout their entire junior career. And in a way, Rowan's kind of robbed Hanya of the junior success. If people don't know in context of what's happened is Rowan has, I feel like, consistently beaten her in the juniors. But Hanya has made greater strides since uh, transitioning into the uh, professional circuit. Yeah. But even if I, even though I said that, I do think Hanya is just too, too much of quality these days. And she's, in a way, very much so established herself as a top five player in the world right now. Yeah, for so, sure. Yep. I'm going to go with Hania in four. Next up, we got two two hard hitters who just smacked the shit out of the ball. 
Uh, yeah. Salma Hani versus Noan Gorhar. I just think Noan Gorhar is also better at it than Salma is. So she's better than everyone. <laughs> she's better yeah. than the men. She's better than the men at hitting the wall hard. Yeah, go her. Go, go on three. Go on three. Yeah. Go three. Okay. All right. Now quickly moving on to the semis. El Sherbini versus SJ. El Sherbini in four for me. I'll go three. I'm going to go three as well. Pat starts off by saying, I like the four. Mate, all you've done since you said that is said you've, in threes. You've all, <coughs> I love threes. Such a flaky person. <laughs> and then next up, we got Hania versus Gohar. Ooh, that's a, that'll be a feisty affair for <laughs> that's sure. That's a good one. Yeah, I think that'll be the toughest one like by far. But obviously. Uh, I could go five for that one. Who you got? Who you got? I wouldn't be surprised if it was if it was five. I might, I might, I might go for Hania in five. I'm going with Gohar. No, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go with Gohar. <laughs> no chance. I'm going to go Gohar, but I'm not going to give a game score. I have no idea, but I think Gohar is going to come through. I think Gohar in four. Um, I mean, right, it's I'm per- sticking with it. I'm sticking with it. I'll go Hania. Yeah, these these two are definitely not best friends from past encounters. That's for sure. Um, oh wait, are you, did you did you see the uh, the clip of the handshake at the end of the last match they played? Was that was that them two? Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I think, sorry. I think it might be. I think I know yeah, what you're the, about. yeah. They're not the best of friends, are they? <laughs> no, they aren't. Oh, because she stood at the front of the court waiting for it, and she was about to walk off court. She came back. And... <laughs> I love that. No, I'll, I'll go Hania. Sticking with it. Yeah. Right now. Um, all right. So I guess we Bit got a different then. finals for for Pat. But for Elliot and I, we got El Shrabini versus Gohar. I think I'm going to go with the – I know it's boring, but I think El Shrabini is going to win this in four. I'm going to go Gohar to win a tournament. I'm going to go Shit. five. Okay. Again, another five star. I think with them two, the longer it goes on, it's, it suits Gohar. Yeah, I think. Yeah, if Shabin doesn't get her off in three or four, I'd back Gohar for for the fifth. Yeah, and like it depends as well. Like if Shabin gets through to the finals like with relative ease, then it's a different story. But if she has a tough one with SJ, and I'm assuming Gohar and Hamami are going to have a tough one. No, wait, I, I disagree. I think El Shabini has an easy draw on her side. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She sh- she should, but if she does... And come on, like a battle with SJ is not going to be not going to be a 100-minute match no. ever. No. So no matter what happens, I think she's coming out of that pretty fresh. So yeah, I, that, that's why I'm going for El Shabini in four. But okay, wait, let's go to Pat because he's got Hania in the final. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll go... Um... I'll go Shabini in four as well for that. Shabini in four. Okay. Hania has been Shabini in the final of this before, right? That was when she won her first. That is. That when is it was true. the World Series, but, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you just made a good point that if she's like fresh for that final, I'm going off that. I reckon, yeah, yeah a four for Shabini. Got it. All right, so that wraps up the woman's draw. Um, so we got Elliot with Gohar winning it, both. Pat and I have El Shrabini winning it. We'll see if everyone's wrong or if one of us hey, is right. I, I fancy that wild card, you know. She might, you know? <laughs> that wild card might do some damage. Don't know. Yeah. Don't know. All right, so now we're going to move on to the men's draw. Uh, right here, I'm going to make the screen bigger. Okay, so we got a lot of interesting first-round matchups for this one. So let's get right into it. We got... Batiste Masadi versus Iker Perez. Pajares Bernabeu. Pajares. Pajares. Um, this is a really good matchup for me. I don't think I've ever seen these two play, but they're very similar in the way they've been coming up the ranks and as of late. Yeah, yeah. I, but. I think Batiste is on fire. I think he's, he's a bit, he was a bit underrated going from 30 to 20 in the world. I th- yeah. I'd, I'd back him to win that. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Batiste. Yeah, I think his style yeah. against Steaker as well. Yeah, the way Pat, he plays. If, if you were to come off the reserve, do you know where would you 
I mean, th- I guess that's a stupid. No, question. you don't. Depends no, on who pulls out. yeah, because seeds move around, don't they? So you just get put with whoever moves up to the nine sixteen uh, seed. Yes. And I think you you yes. get put in. Scratch, yeah, scratch that question. Uh, let me ask you a different question. If you were to be put in at any of these spots, which would you fancy most? Which would I fancy imagine. most? I will go spot. Surely. Maybe, maybe I don't want to give that away. Okay, okay. Just in case I do. <laughs> I'll tell you after. Okay, well, we'll talk about it after this recording. Then. I fancy that. Um, no, no. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. I'll say that. Um, so, interest. everyone got... I got Batista as well. But I think it's going to be a, a long four-gamer for that. I'll go in a three. I yeah, might I'm just gonna go three, the part that Pat said he likes the four. <laughs> I'm going to go three. Um, okay, next up we got Gregor Marsh versus wild card Abdul Rahman Nassar. Never heard of him. Marsh and three. Honest. Marsh and three. Yeah, yeah, playing well. Not a so lot hard, of faith so for the uh, men's, men's wild card over here, guys. No, men's wild card's not. I, just, I don't have anything to go off. I don't know if he's yeah. incredible or really bad. Um, next up, we got Gosol versus Zahed Salim. I'm going yeah, Sorov. Yeah. Sorov. 3 1, I'm going. What's, Zahed hasn't yeah. been seen in recent. Has, I don't know if he's coming back from injury, but. Well, he's, he just. He, well, actually, I think he's one of the ones I'm thinking might pull out because he just played the final of the 20K in Egypt and he pulled out of the final against. I'll I'll say it. I'll say it. Yeah, 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 I saw that. Um, so I don't know if he is injured. So that's that's that could be where uh, Pat be, Pat could be going in, guys. Yeah. So if you're watching this, pull out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Need to book my flight. Okay. Next up, we got Yusuf Soliman versus Victor Cruan. Who do we have for this one? It's a good match. That. Mm, yeah. That'll really be nice matchup. to watch. It's hard to call that one. That's on the back court, right? The ones where it says court 13, and then the other yeah. one's from the glass. So I reckon that's going to be a long one as well. Be a brutal game, that I reckon. I reckon... <sighs> Not hearing any names, guys. Who do no. we have? I'm going to go Victor in five. I think he could do it. I think he's capable of beating Solomon. I'll go Solomon in five. Oh, Jesus. You know, Victor is the first guest of the Rally Report podcast, so I got to give it to my boy. Victor in three. Close games, but <laughs> <laughs> no chance. And it's I don't know. I think, statement. I think this is also a bold, bold statement right here. Probably Solomon's never going to come on this podcast after I say this, but I, don't know, I think Solomon cracks under pressure. It seems like he's an easy player to get some upsets over. Okay. He, he um, has them before. I mean, he's done. Yeah. So I'm going Victor in three. You know, a couple tie breaks, but no chance. He's that would be a down. great win. Yeah. Yeah, very um, impressive if he does that. Next up, Caesar Salazar versus Yusuf Ibrahim. Ibrahim in three. Ibrahim in three. Yeah. Could be a four for me. I like in three, to be honest. Yeah. Next up, these these two just keep drawing each other in every tournament these as of late. James Wilson versus uh, Oh yeah. Abu Algar. It's two to in the la- it's two for two, isn't it? It's, no, it's the third three. third one, third one. US Open, Canary Wharf, and now Black Ball. Yeah. I'm saying didn't Jimbo win the last Oh yeah, two? yeah. Last two he's won. Yeah. yeah. Canary Wharf was pretty decisive. Yeah, I'll go Jimbo. I'm gonna go Jimbo. Jimbo. Um, three one. Yeah. I'm going with Jimbo. I do well. I do really like Abu Algar. I like the way he plays. But it's just Jimbo goes really, number. Like, yeah, I think he, he, he struggles. He doesn't James. like playing him. You can tell he does not like playing him. Yeah. Well, okay. Let me throw this out there. It is on a traditional court. Don't think it matters. I don't. Yeah, I don't think matters. it's going to matter that much. Wait, yeah. I actually, do have a question for Pat. Um, what would you say is the biggest difference between a traditional court and glass court? Um, different for everyone, but I'd, for me, it's the like the the vision, like seeing the ball earlier, I find harder on a glass, and then oh, you have a harder time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the biggest thing for me. And there's a slightly different 
way it comes off the wall, I guess. It's technically deader at, like when you go in short, but I don't think that makes much of a difference for me. But a cold, like say the one in Qatar, that cold glass court, it really, like it's hard yeah. to have long rallies on there, but most of them I don't see much of a, a difference. It's more about the seeing the ball early and stuff like that. Gotcha. Okay, so we're all going with Wolstrop for that one. Next up, Matthew Castanier versus Omar Mossad. I'm going with Mossad for that one. I don't think Castanier is back in, in the form he was in a couple of years back. Yeah, I'm going to go with Mossad. I'm the same. Castanier hasn't played like yeah. many tournaments at all. Do you guys he? think it's going to be an easy 3-0 or 3-1? I'm going to go 3-1. I think it's a good game. Yeah. Next up, finally, El Shrabini versus Rodriguez. Who do you guys have for that one? El Shrabini, to me, is an anomaly. I feel like at times he he just randomly has these really crazy upsets. And He's very he good playing. in certain tournaments, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to write him off here, but... I'm going to go Miguel. Miguel in... Yeah, oh. yeah I'm going to go Miguel in four. I might go Miguel in five. That's on the traditionals as well. Yeah. Don't know if that um, makes a difference. Yeah. I'm going with Miguel in four as well. Okay. So moving on to round two, we got Farag versus Batista. Batista. Who do we have here? Is it Batista or is it, is it a Batiste? Batiste, yeah. Thrown in the A there. Is the Batista. A silent? It's the wrestler, isn't it? A type, is it a typo over here in the draw? Oh, it's a typo that. Okay. <laughs> The oh. funny typo. But... Batista. <laughs> kind of digging the name Batista more, but... You should change his name to Batista, actually. Yeah. But um, I got, yeah. Farag in three. I'm going to go... F- yeah. Yeah, Farag in a... Tough three. Three. Yeah. Close. I'm going to go with... Not close at all. Three. So he can just slot next, though. Like, yeah, he doesn't hold he back, does slot. he? He has, yeah. like, no rhythm in his game. Yeah. But it is Ali Farag. I think it's going to be three, but I think it's going to be yeah, close three. Pat, have you played either of these players? What, uh, Farag or Baptiste? Both, both of them. I've, no, only, not in a PSA event. I played Baptiste once years ago in Italian League. And that's a so, gotcha. yeah, strange scoring system. Next up, I think this is a good matchup. Hesham versus Marsh. That's yeah, good very one. good matchup. This is a good matchup. Um, I go, um, Mazin's playing very well. So is Marsh. And I watched them. Did they play in US Open on the back courts? It was a really good match. Yeah, they did. Mazin won, right? One in four, I think. Yeah, Mazin won that. Yeah, I'm going to go. I really don't know for this one. I'm going to go Mazin. Mazin in four. I, I, I want to see Marsh. Marsh in five. Oh, it's. I That'd get the deciding vote. Yeah. That'd be a big win. Hashem doesn't win too many five setters, does he? Yeah, that's what I say. If it goes to five, I'm, yeah. which I do think it is. Is it on? Oh, it's on the glass. On the glass. Yeah, it, sh- it should be on the glass. I'm going to go Mazen in four. All right. Well, my pick's out of the way then. Um, it's, not, it's not a bad pick, though. Go either uh, way there, I reckon. Yeah. Also, great matchup next, especially with I don't know what's really going on with Gawad here, but uh, Gawad versus Gosal. I'm gonna go. go I'm gonna go Sarav. Sarav. I'm going Sarav. Yes. Yeah. If Gawad's still there. Yeah. Pat, Pat, do you have any inside info on what's happening with Gawad? I don't. I don't want to get it wrong, but I've heard it's something to do with his foot. It's like a probably can't get rid of. Like, oh, it's untreatable. It's slowly. Not going away, but Damn. he um, what is it? Is it like bruising? I I, cause I heard in the first round of a tournament he's fine, but then after that he really struggles. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure if he's like, is is like heel or his feet get bruising from it all the like contact. But if he's still going through that, I'll go first. Well, you know, given what Pat just said that it doesn't affect him on the first round. Fuck that! I'm going with Gawad for that one. And oh yeah, but if it's not effective first round, then you can't train like properly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. why. That's why I say I don't want to. I don't want to like get it wrong. Um, that's what I heard. But I mean, Gawad could 
probably still just beat anyone. Do you know what I mean, his hands are ridiculous. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if it's not affecting him, it, this should be relatively easy. What was the last Wadi, event he, he played? He's been playing... Uh, been playing most of them, but... Yeah, just, it's just... Did he play Canary out. Wharf? No, he pulled out Canary Wharf. I don't think he played, yeah. Um, he played in US Open. And also US Open. the NetSuite Open as well. Who did he lose to in the US? Do you remember? Who did he lose to? I can't remember. He lost to Shivagi in NetSuite. Yeah, he looked he looked good though in um Yeah, he did. He was playing well. I can't remember he lost in the US. Um I can I'm sure he that. played the US. I'm fairly certain he did. I could be wrong. Here, let me look this up real quick. Uh, yeah, he he lost to he played in the Qatar, lost to Abu Elgar there, and then lost to Joel Macon in in three for US. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, difficult one to call. But I've called it now, so I'm got. I'm sticking with Sarov. And Sarov's been in good form, so that's not yeah. a shocking pick. Um, next up, Asal versus my boy Victor. That'd be a good one. Did I say Victor? Yeah, I said Victor. Uh... Oh wait, no, you guys. Uh, I you said, said Victor. I said, you yeah, said, I said you Solomon. Just... Yeah. I said Victor. I'm gonna go. Oh, I think Asal's gonna win. Three love. Yeah. Three love. Yeah. I'll go with that as well. Sorry, Victor. Um. Yeah, sorry, Victor, but you know I'll just say it for the sake. I saw twelve ten in the fifth game, <laughs> and he rips off his shirt for that one. <laughs> and then, all right, next up, this is a good matchup, I think. Tarek versus Yusuf Ibrahim. That'd be a good one. Yeah, be a shootout that one. That would be yeah. They might as well just like cut out the back half of the court for that one. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I think moment though. I think moment I'll just have a little bit. A little bit too much. But Ibrahim can just have those days where he's just like, he doesn't miss. Yeah. I mean, when he's on, it's it's over. Did you see so, the one, did you see the Joel Maker match in, was it Manchester? Yeah, in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. that was the Manchester Open. He was 10 8 up in the fifth. Sure. Playing, four, playing yeah. unreal. Put four balls into the tin. So you can do that yeah. as well. Off the serve, off the serve, he did it as well. Yeah, you but, can the, rest, do that as well, but... the rest of it was unreal. He just crumbled yeah. it. Match ball, didn't he? I mean, that was a, yeah, that was an incredible run from him. And also at Qatar, took out Shrebaggy. Yeah, uh, I'll go. Yeah. I'll go a tough four for Tarek. Tough four for Moment. That's what I'm feeling yeah. as well. Yeah, I was gonna go with four and Moment, but wouldn't be a huge shock if Yusuf can pull that off. Next up is also a really good match. We haven't got really good matchups here for the second round for the men's side. Will Strop versus uh, oh, Marwan El Shrabagi. Let me just say that Marwan did lose to Will Strop. This, this is his US, um, Open. U.S. Open draw reverse, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It literally yeah. is because if, if Jimbo wins, he plays Tarek. If Tarek wins, the yeah. same. I'm gonna go Jimbo, three. It's a bit of uh, <laughs> bias going on here, but I'm going Jimbo as well. I'm gonna go Jimbo three love. <laughs> it's Even though Marwan won this tournament last year, Jimbo three love. I'm gonna go with Marwan. I just think Marwan has an extra gear on him, especially when he plays on e in Egypt and. I know, he, like I do know that he hasn't been performing to his best, but if there is a tournament that he comes back playing on fire, I think this is it. Yeah, I mean, keep yeah, in mind, yeah, year, so. keep in mind, he's won it and also made it to the finals. I think yeah. that court that court suits James. It's it's quite a nice court to play on. It takes in a nice short ball. If James is playing well, his his body's feeling all right. I think I think he'll do it. Yeah. yeah. It looks like he's been moving so well lately. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah been... We trained with him yesterday, and he was getting to balls like he was nowhere near. Like he's he's moving well. Wait, Pat, how do you do against him? Um, I beat him one, but he wasn't he wasn't playing well, I'd, like or not his best, nowhere near his best. Yeah, and I've lost to him four times before that, three one. Um, I'm 100. Okay. Uh, I've got 100 percent win rate against them in training now. It's true, is it? <laughs> oh, you know, we'll see how many years longer it's gonna take for <laughs> Sam Todd to be in a draw like this. Oh God, we haven't got that long. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be retired by then. All right, moving on to Joel Macon versus Mossad. Macon's just too quality now. Yeah. 
Jolene, Jolene, Jolene three. Jolene three. I'll go a comfortable three. My first comfortable three. I'd say a tough three. I'm going to go a mid-difficulty three. Love how okay. we just mixed it up here, guys. Um, but but for Joel, it probably will be nothing more than mid-difficulty. Yeah, he'll make it that time. <laughs> yeah. Next up, Paul Cole versus Miguel. Comfortable three for me on this one. I'm going to go three, one, Cole. I'll go three... Love mid difficulty. Call difficulty. Yeah, there's just no chance Miguel's taking a game off him, especially in the form that Cole is in. Yeah, yeah you're right. Isn't he? You're right. I'd like to reverse that. I'm gonna go Cole. Yeah, mid just yeah. like Miguel's thing is, you know, him being outfitting someone. That's what's the intimidating factor for him. But you got a player who's not gonna be intimidated by him at all. Yeah. So yeah, Cole and Cole and a quick three for me. But all right, now moving on to quarterfinals. Uh, Farag versus, I mean, we got we got some mix of opinions here, but it doesn't matter for me. Farag's going to comfortably go to the semis for that. Actually, I think Hesham might take a game off him. <coughs> I think Hesham can take a game, yeah. I mean, yeah. they've had like, what? They, they last time in the US off. Open, they had three. Was it, was it in five or was it four? It was five or four. It was a tough one. Yeah, it did. It, yeah, it was nine and three. So, for but, sure. Um, I mean, Mazen can get a game of anyone, so yeah, I'm gonna go Farag three one. I'll go the same, yeah, the unoriginal. Okay, next up, Asal versus Surav or Gawai. Also, a mix of opinions there, but Asal is gonna take go through with that one for me. Yeah, Asal. Yeah, Asal probably yeah three. I'll go with three. Regardless is, of yeah. Surav or Gawai, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go four. I'm gonna go four. Mix it up. With I mean, oh you got you got Sarav going past that, right? I've got yeah, I, Asal and Sarav, I'm gonna go four. Okay. okay, moving on. Momin versus either Jimbo or I have Marwan for that one. I go Jimbo, Jimbo and four. Okay, I think the bias is going a little too far now. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, Moment and Jimbo. I just think. I think uh, I'll go. To, oof, I'll go to... Okay, guys, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm telling I... you, I'm telling you, his, his career is just like started all over again. He's he's peaking now. It's it's his prime. He's coming into his peak, yeah, his peak years, yeah. I don't even think at its his like form right now that there's any chance that. I also feel like once a player gets two wins over Willstrop, they've really figured out how to beat him. Yeah, Tarek's style. I yeah, I think he can expose his movement like to really the front. breaks down the whole up and down movement with his style. Yeah, how he takes the ball short. Um, love how Pat's agreeing with me, but still going with Jimbo. I'm, I believe in him. I'm Scotty believing Jimbo. him. It's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Moment, moment's taking that from me. <laughs> <laughs> Is, so Jimbo's going through, yeah? If, Jimbo if, goes through, yeah. If Jimbo goes through, moment. If Marwan goes through, I still think moment. That'll be moment in five. All right. We'll agree to disagree on that one. Oh, wait. You want to talk about it for a quick sec? If Who do you guys think will win if? Marwan goes through. I still think Moman, uh, I mean, I think Moman will win, yeah. Yeah. I think Moman, yeah, like you said, five. Five or four. Moman five. Yeah. Okay. Next up, it's going to be a marathon match. Um, Joel Macon versus Paul Cole. Last time I said Joel Macon <sighs> broke my heart. So, yeah. I always want to watch that matchup. Just to see like how they battle away with each other, but I don't think Joel's beat him for like the last four times. Yeah, I think yeah. Cole obviously has like unbelievable physicality as well as Joel, but I think Cole's just putting his games together a little bit better, a little bit quicker than than Joel is. What do you guys think? I mean, uh, in a perspective, they look like an exact replica of each other. What do you two think is the difference maker here between Paul's game and Joel's mate game? I think, like I think Paul Cole's squash right now is just he's just playing better squash. I think at the minute, I think 
he's like he's very yeah, aware of his strengths. Yeah. Um, he's like going in short is just so much more confident than he was like. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like completely different player to to what he was a year ago. Like the so both matched the on. Difference? The difference between the two players are is Paul. The quality, the quality of squash. Yeah. 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 And like, he can do it for five games as well. Like he can do it the whole way through. Like you he's know got, what he's gonna do. Yeah. He's not gonna go away. He's added like differences to his like his games. He's got options. Like, he can I mean, I mean that's why, that's, why being, that's why he's beating Ali now. Like, yeah. Before like, yeah, okay, Ali would it would be a tough one. It'd be long, but you knew like Ali would have enough to beat him. Yeah. But now Ali was things in. Yeah. Ali's, like, physicality is like. He was always in control. Ali was he? but now Paul's added those things to his game. Like Farag's suddenly under the pressure, like for a lot of it. I think that's that's why he'll beat Joel again. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah. Well, I got, given that Joel disappointed me last time, I'm going with Paul for this one. In four, though. I think Joel could sneak the third. Yeah. Game. Yeah. I think it'll be, I think it'll be yeah. four. Yeah. I think it'd be tough. And probably 120 something minutes for that one. Okay. So now we're moving on to the semis. We got a Farag versus a Saul. Whew. Who do we have for this one? It's tasty, that. Yeah. I'm going to go Farag. Farag, I think. Is this all beating Farag yet? Uh, just in right? the best of three. In the best of three format, yes, he has, but not yeah. in the best of five. I mean, I could beat Pat in the best of three, so I'm going to go... Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Ignore that. I'd find no. my chances again. <laughs> Back in your junior days, who was who had the edge? Well, well, he's older than me. The edge. He's yeah. older than me. We never played. But if we did, I oh, think so, I would so probably take was... him. Well, t- oh, well t- I would have probably into... taken him down in four or five if we played. No. <clears throat> and I was in my prime. No, he's g- no chance in beating me in juniors. And now what we do is... We've been playing two bounce versus one bounce, so that's where we're at right now. Yeah, and he did. He did. He did. Last he did no, he didn't. He did win last, in the last game, and he broke his racket over his leg. So, all right, okay. Oh, he broke his racket. <laughs> did he? Did he? Did he get that from George Parker? Taking notes now. Bro. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. He Wait, didn't so- beg on me, but he did win. Is George Parker ranked higher than you right now, Pat? And is he also on we, the- we we're going above each other like monthly at the minute. I am slightly above him. Yeah. But I was below last month and the month before that I was above. We're quite uh, close at the minute. You guys are have you guys been going on similar trajectories on how you guys are moving up um the rankings career wise, or has he Um uh, No, I'd say he had like quite a quick rise early on. Yeah. Um, and then he slowed down, whereas I've gradually creeped up throughout the years. I think he got to 30, 31 in the world when he was 21. So is this your discreet way of saying you got more growth potential than him? <laughs> Could be a discreet way of saying that, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so. okay. Yeah. Moving back to the uh, semis, who do we have for this one? For Ag for me. I'll, I'll go for Ag as well. All right. Well, fuck me. I'm going with a saw for this one. I think it's about time he beats Farag. Yeah, this is the tournament to do it. And we is that the only one he hasn't beat, right? Is that the only? Yeah, I think he's, that's the only top player, even though they've gone to five. I still, I still think Farag. I still think Farag. Yeah. Pat, you got Farag in three, I'm, four? Yeah, I'm trying to make up my mind. I'm... Yeah. Oof. I'll, I'll go with Sal. I've changed my mind. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, I think Asal has an easier quarterfinal run than Farag, regardless of who comes out. I don't think a tough match affects Asal, though. The the next day, like, did you see that tournament where he he played three 90-minute matches in a row and didn't see the US Open Open run, yeah. Didn't affect him one bit. He is the youngest out of this entire group. Yeah. Yeah. I'll um, think yeah, I think it's about time. Where, Pat, who do you, uh, you have a Saul in what five, four? I go five, yeah. And then Elliot, you got Farag in a. I'm gonna go Farag in four, maybe three. Okay. Close, close, but I think close. Yeah, I'm gonna go with a Saul in five. 
Now, moving on, Cole versus Moman. Yeah, I'm going with Cole. Cole's just been on a rampage recently. Yeah, Cole. Cole yeah, versus Cole. Jimbo. Uh, I'm going to go... I think he'll have a bit too probably much Jimbo in the later. I'm probably going to say Jimbo again. I'm Jimbo and Cole. <laughs> I think he'll have a bit too much for Cole in the semis. Jimbo and Cole. Oh, wait, wait, so both of you guys have Jimbo, Jimbo in the semis. To beat. Yeah, yeah. And, and to beat. It's going to be, Cole. It's gonna be a Commonwealth Games 2018 repeat, I think. I think he's, got, he's definitely got one more in the locker. A comfortable three I'm going with. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, should have made sure to diversify the nationalities here for this predictions, but I'm, I'm yeah. a clip. <laughs> Same clip, but... but okay, I'm going with Paul. I don't know what these guys are talking about. <laughs> I think Paul in three, regardless of okay. whether it be Moman or Jimbo for me. Okay. Well, so we've got a Jimbo Cole and, and Farag final then. Farag. It's a good tournament from Jimbo. <laughs> so, wait, let's start with let's start with Elliot. Who do we have? Farag versus Will Strap in the final. This is a tough one, but I'm still gonna go Jimbo. I think over the finish line. If Some he's be- if he's beating up Will Gar, Shivagi, Moman, and Cole in the same tournament, then he's he's obviously gonna beat Farag. So right, and his and his body is fresh enough to handle yeah I think so. all these matches. He's vegan, so he's healthy. So he'll be he'll be fine. We can back it up. Pessy, are you on the are you on the vegan diet? I'm not. No, I'm, not. I'm on the. To... This guy's on the Popeyes and everything <coughs> other than vegan diet. Trust me, he stayed in my house a couple of weeks ago. I know what diet he's on. It's not vegan. This is the diet of a uh, professional squash player here. No, I'm I'm an athlete. I don't eat fast food or anything bad. Salads only for me. <laughs> Salad maybe the odd chicken breast. Maybe the odd chicken breast. Nothing. Nothing unhealthy. No fat. No salt. No sugar. Count counting calories on the daily. Yep. I'm always minus calories each day. <laughs> minus calories. Guaranteed. Yep. <laughs> Guaranteed. And and no drinks on the weekends. No, no. I've not. I've never drank. Yeah, we're down the street. As Pat's never had a sip of alcohol in his life. Uh, Ellie, can yep. you, can, Ellie, can, can you confirm that? I'm not saying anything on that one. Cannot confirm that. But I can't deny either. All right. Well, we'll, we'll stop pegging Pat on this. But... <laughs> on, on his drink problem. <laughs> on his <What? laughs> All right. So let's let's get a little realistic here with either a Saul. So Pat and I have a Saul in the final. Oh, we versus... don't. <laughs> oh, you got, yeah, you got but... for a... You you said Asal. Asal. Oh, oh, sorry, a salvo Jimbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Whoa, whoa. Are we actually going with Jimbo <laughs> in the final? We'll, 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 we will go for it. Yep. Okay. We'll, we'll well, I'll go with Cole. Well, just in case. Just in case it doesn't make it, we'll do the other ones. <laughs> in the off chance, he doesn't make it. But, okay. Well, let's start off with the Frog versus Jimbo in the final. Jimbo, Jimbo in three. Nah, four. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it. I'm going to go a tough five for Jimbo. Tough five for Jimbo. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, I think I'll close Martin four. Yeah, these, these boys are not convincing me. In that unlikely scenario, I'm going with Farag in three. Now let's um, entertain my scenarios. Should we, should we do one where Jimbo isn't in the final just in case? So wait. Elliot's strong headed about Farag being in the final, and then you yeah. had Cole making it to the final as well, right? And who would, who would you have? Who would you have on that scenario? Cole and Farag. Yeah. Farag. Farag. I, like I don't think Farag's gonna lose to him. I don't think Farag. Like when was the last time Farag lost like two tournaments in a row? Like, and like in Egypt as well. Last tournament of the year. I'm gonna go I mean, isn't he Farag. fresh off? Isn't he fresh off losing two tournaments in a row? That's not <laughs> when was the last time. No, when, when was, was the last time? time? Oh. When when is the last time he won a tournament? He 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 was not. Oh, fine. He lost the U.S. Open, didn't he? I thought he, he lost the U.S. Too. Open to Macon. Did oh, not participate shoot. in a Qatar. Lost in Canary. True. Open. No, I'm still I'm still going to Farag. I'm going Farag. Cole. Any I'm going Cole. On Cole that. to win it all. Yes, yeah, I said that. I said that at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, for the record, I had Cole winning this, but considering these guys took, we had to separate our picks here. I'm going with Asal. I also do actually think if Asal makes it to the final, I think he might be too much for Cole. That would be a great final. Yeah, what do you guys think of that matchup? If it was Cole versus Asal? Well, there's, his, there's history there, isn't there? There's a lot of history. In Egypt as well. Yeah, that's that's where, where uh, that's where it all started, wasn't it? That's where it all started. I'm gonna, it's gonna go. be a, a mental battle. I might fancy a salad in that one. I think. Yeah. I think Col- Cole's games have gone up a few notches since that match, though. Yeah. Well, so Cole s- beat him. Yeah, Cole beat him in Qatar. He looked really good, didn't he? Yeah, but I also felt like Asal for some reason kind of fell off on that. Like it looked a little never, bit soft. Yeah, I've never seen him like that. Yeah, like, he looked, yeah, he looked right. like, he, looked like yeah. he was trying to like make amends like throughout the whole match. So I was cool. thinking this the same thing. It's like, he was, looked like he was trying to like say sorry the whole time. Yeah, and trying to like, but amend the relationship in Egypt last tournament of the year. I don't think he would do yeah, that. No chance. So yeah, I got a solid. I got a solid take in this tournament. I'm gonna go far uh, so, from the start. Um, so we got three different winners there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going call. Um. So for well, I've got Jimbo Elliot. Elliot, we got Jimbo. For me, I got Assal, and then Pat's got Cole. All Jimbo. And we're doing. Uh, we're putting a hundred hundred ten k on the line here. Is that how much we're doing? Yeah, I've got I've got the funds. Yeah. Match match up the tournament. <laughs> got the funds now. He's thirty one in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Just broke ten k. I don't think I'll ever have the funds. Um, yeah, whoever wins the Collins Jimbo matchup will win the whole thing. I didn't know these guys are handing me this uh, this bet win here with Jimbo as their picks, but uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. I'll take it. But well, yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it up there, folks, with the predictions for the Black Ball Open. Uh, tune in happens starting Sunday, and hopefully, fingers crossed. Pat gets into this and shakes up the draw because if that's the case, I'm switching my pick. Then Pat's, yes. Pat's winning it at all. Same. Me and Jimbo in the final. No, nah, Pat will lose to Jimbo in the final. I'm going for <laughs> Jimbo in a comfortable four. Not nah, three. But all right. Um, thank you for tuning in, guys. Thanks, mate.